bang at my hotel door woke me up. Something's come up, Chung He told me as he took a seat next to the window. I have some things I have to do, but I've marked the route for you and sent it to your phone. He pulled out an iPad and talked me through a one-day self-directed tour of the Shanghai that reflected the city he loved to photograph. I was to go alone. I'd first met Chang Ho in Amsterdam as he collected a World Press Photo Award for a picture story on Chinese zoos. We had since become friends and had travelled together around China and America, giving lectures about innovations in Chinese photography. He was young but had forged an impressive reputation amongst the Chinese photographic elite. I always enjoyed our time together and was disappointed he would not join me for the day. Chang He left the room and I packed my bag to head off to the first marker on the map. Jing An Villa, North Gate, off Nanjing Road. Turning off the highly commercialised Nanjing Road into the small streets of the Shanghai Lilong is a strange experience. Drying clothes hang above the busy alleyway life and people go about a much less hurried existence. Signs of the new Shanghai wealth are still there, but mixed with the sound of recyclers' bells and residents washing and cooking in the street. The midday sun was strong, but I opted to continue by foot, south towards the French concession and on to Yongjia New Village, my next way marker. My phone told me it would take 40 minutes, but I was strolling at a leisurely pace, enjoying the tree-lined streets and stopping to photograph people eating through the windows of small cafes young couples having their wedding pictures taken, and street vendors hawking just about anything they could fit on their carts. A man selling steam buns objected, shouting at my picture-taking and jolting me back into the real world. It took me nearly two hours to reach the destination, and in reaching it I was confused. A man squatted in the street reading music, and a flower seller looked at me, then looked away. Did I really look like I didn't have anyone to buy flowers for? I called Chung He. There's nothing here, I said. He laughed. Yes, I know, but isn't it a great walk? Before hanging up, he warned me to get back to the hotel quickly as a storm was about to blow into the city, and I hailed a cab, returned to my room, and took a nap while the storm blew over. By 4pm, the rain had stopped, and I took the subway to the third marker, this time heading northeast to Yangpu district. The late afternoon sun picked out the bright colours of the street market, and I sensed a different mood in these parts. I was off the tourist trail, and the people I photographed laughed and joked in a way that left me smiling as I walked on. The area used to house the heavy industry of Shanghai, but there are few traces left, with many of the old factory houses being replaced by modern high-rise apartment blocks. But, as mixed as the community is, it feels uniquely Shanghai. To finish the day, Chang He picked me up in his car and we drove to the Bun to watch the sun go down over Pudong. It's an iconic view and one Chang He and myself had photographed many times before, but it simply is too magnificent not to be included on the tour. Following the crowds back along Nanjing Road, we finished the day with a meal, a beer and all my stories from the day. <laughs>